Alright, so we're inside the car. Oh, that helps a little bit. So, if you look over there, I had, it had that square point in a bolt area that wasn't being used, weirdly enough. And I got my shock strut tire guy fabricated, and then I bolted through, bolted through, and I put a lock nut in there. So I'm just going to undo this one. I'm actually going to leave those brackets down there, because the way that I designed it, um, you know, I can remove those two bolts and those two bolts, so four bolts, and I can pull this this unit out of here, and then we'll go for our, uh, you know, paint, sand, blah, 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 blah. I mean, so biggest problem I had was actually the, uh, where it landed onto the upper bar, whether it was more forward or more back, right? So that was kind of fun figuring out. But essentially, you know, this is not, again, not a professional, not, not a race car. <laughs> This is just for fun, and because uh, the more time you spend learning and, and figuring out how to do shit, the more in life everything becomes a little easier, right? In my opinion. So the more I can do, the more I can learn, the more I can I can move forward, and the more I can I can get done and do what I want, which is kind of mess around with cars, make them faster, make them faster than they are naturally, and uh, biggest part of that is is uh, your suspension and your brakes. More than anything, you need a really good suspension setup. Far more outweighs, in my opinion, getting like, you know, turbo wing and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, if you can run through a canyon faster with a stiffer chassis than you can with more horsepower, because the horsepower thing is kind of like, everyone wants to be like, oh, I get a thousand fucking horsepower, bro. It's like, yeah, well, you don't really have a thousand horsepower. You only have it at the peak torque and RPM of your of your motor, right? So 90% of the time, that even if you got a thousand horsepower, you're only using like two, three hundred of it. Really, seriously, it, and and that's that's the funny thing about all these people who are like, oh, I got this Mustang and it's oh, it's so fat. It's like okay, that's great, but if I can take you in a canyon with a car that's got half or a third of your horsepower, what does that tell you? It tells you that your car is bullshit. So. Hey, no cursing. Can't believe I said that. But here, if you just look at this, right? Pretty fun. Pretty fun. Pretty, pretty interesting to do. Um, and again, I'm not a welder fabricator, but, uh, you know, if you put some energy in some shit, you'll figure it out. All right. So you to pull this apart, see about sanding, and see if I got the paint to get her done. So... I basically, I took all this down, I, I left a little bit of uh, residue right now. I'm kind of going through and I'm, I'm cleaning all my areas. I started with a uh, good 100 heavy grit and kind of worked my way down to a 220. And I, I like the one that's like, uh, can be used wet or dry, you know, depending on what you're doing, that's kind of helpful. Uh, the 3M is kind of the one that everyone, you're going to find it everywhere, but it'll say wet and dry on the back, that little thing. So I filled in a little bit right there with some uh, quick weld for just making it look cleaner on my paint job, really. And I, I did it all the way around, and then I sanded that back down. I went through this each of these, and I kind of figured out, like, how to, you know, bend and fold my piece of paper to get around and in the corners and blah, blah, blah. So... Whatever you do, Rust-Oleum is a good choice. I, I'd probably, I, well, I had thought about doing it in this, uh, in this red, but first you got to primer it, right? And something that's like wet dry is kind of the best way to go. The um, Rust-Oleum red, I showed. <laughs> I'm not not going to go for that. I was just thinking about it because I had it. I uh, did end up using the quick weld, like I said, to fill in those little joints and little inclusions, essentially. But that's really not uh, structurally an issue. It, it, this is not uh, weld quality, but it's clean, and it looks much better now, you know? And kind of went through everything. Take your time. All right. Turn off the light there. We just painted this bad boy. Just make it kind of disappear, you know? Because as soon as I put this all back together and get it behind everything, it's going to disappear. <laughs> you barely be able to see it from the trunk, and you definitely will not be able to see it through the back seat. 
So, I mean, I could leave it like this, like, you know, but honestly, putting your seats in and doing all the rest of it just makes you look low profile, right? A little less notable. So, I debated um, the color, blah, 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 but I was like, you know, black color, black thing makes perfect sense, and you know, it kind of eliminates it. So, I just got to pop back in the bolts here. This guy is for the lower and through. And this guy, let's try that again. This guy is the one that I have set up to go up top there, the right left hand side. And uh, yeah, just uh, I'm going to put in the bottom one probably first. Bottom one, bottom one, then upper one. Because I got to uh, throw this little rubber guy in there and hold it in place. So just by tightening the lower guys, it's going to have enough force to hook those guys up and in place. And of course, it'll help me make sure that I've got it in the right place. And uh, yeah, I mean... Black hides all sorts of mistakes, <laughs> but she's looking good. She's actually uh, well together. I mean, some of my favorite choice of paint, uh, acrylic enamel, ceramic would be better. But to sand, well, I sanded it down all the way to the bare metal. Then I uh, put the first coat on, ended up sanding. All right, uh, first coat on, let it dry. Second coat, it actually did that freaking alligator skin. Because I think it was a little too warm where I had it. So I had to sand that and then start again. Because, you know, obsessive compulsive. So we're all together. We're just going to throw these little rubber bushing guys. Which, by the way, are just extra that I had from... God, I don't even remember. I think it's like... Oh, you know what? I do know what it is. Um, control arm. There were bushing or rubber bushings on the end of this one. But then the new generation didn't ha have this and it had it built in so I had these left over so it's good solid rubber I'm just gonna put the little lines like that to the back gonna think of them as like grip or whatever and then it looks cleaner on this side and again I put the seat back in and you'll never see this bar ever again other than looking through the trunk and even then you're only seeing like right here right so it doesn't make it look like anything which is kind of the whole idea I like sleeper cars I like cars that perform well don't cost a lot to run because this car gets 30 to 40 miles per gallon unless you're being a doo and then it'll get a little less than that but uh so far so good right she's an awesome little car i'm just making her solid and i'll show you the part that i took off of here it was kind of interesting and actually all of those silver ones are all the attaching bolts or screws whatever you want to call them that held the bracket in place and then it had a bar across i'll go out and i'll show you it uh in a moment because i'm you know i'm not gonna walk through my garage with the phone on just have a nice big jerky burp, 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 whoa, 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 while i'm walking that's kind of stupid so all i'm gonna do is get her back in place put up the seat call it a day i think the lower guy down there i was gonna paint that bracket too but i ended up not it already had a coating on it. The only thing that it needs is maybe for those edges, but it's fine. So maybe at a later date I'll do such a thing. Let me just pop this guy together. Alright, so rubber bush, rubber bush, locked in with a lock nut washer on the other side. I always put the bolts away from the front really matter obviously but if you're undoing it and you didn't want to have to pull out of place whatever the fuck your nut on the back side makes sense to me so i mean she is Ooh, solid feels good man i'm super jazzed about it just a little micro improvement i mean it's nothing it's nothing that's going to change this car for too 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 much but it really did make it so that the wishbone setup works better Right, because now you have a uh, strep tower bar in the rear here. And let me uh, let me show you the, what was here. All right. So the bracket that was there, you can imagine when you're in the back of the trunk, you were looking at the back side of this. If you took off the seat, there's the hanger 
right there on the middle for the seat that I did when I removed it, you know, you, I lost that bracket, right? It's the only thing I lost. So, I mean, not to say that this is heavy or anything, but I didn't lose weight, right? But what I gained was rigidity and I gained access to making it kind of a hatchback. And I'm still thinking about how I can hinge my existing uh, seat or something if it's possible. So, see all those little holes in the bottom? That's where it attached the chassis. I mean, it's a strong bit, right? But like, it really didn't improve anything. So when I got her the new bar in, I mean, I, I drove home in the Canyons with it. It's whew, so much better. Car's gripping and ripping. But yeah, just one thing at a time. This is definitely an unnecessary thing, but it was fun. And I hope it was, or is, <laughs> enjoyable for you guys.